Welcome to this month's edition of Hazmat IQ Chemical of the Month. I'm Chris. I'm Joe. We're from Hazmat IQ and we're here to train you, refresh you on the use of your charts and how to use the Hazmat IQ system. So guys, go get your NIOSH guide that you got in the, uh, at the class and go get your charts. You'll need this. We'll spend the next four, five, six, seven minutes uh, reviewing uh, a chemical and how to use the charts to uh, size up the call, uh, identify hazards, meters, and PPE. This one, this one brings me back to when I was a younger guy and when I used to live in Montana. And this was, this is the dispatch information. Here's your clue. Dispatch information said a young hiker passed out after swimming in a hot spring. His father said the spring smelled like rotten eggs. And when he came back 45 minutes later, he found his son unconscious. So, what's the name of that gas? LSD? <laughs> Maybe, but not this guy. <laughs> so, look, let's use the system since I don't know what it is. So, I don't have a chemical name, so I can't size up based on a name. So, this is an unknown. I don't know what, I don't know if it's LSD. Right. It could be something else. So, we don't have a name, so I've got to still have a starting point, which is my SOP for the unknown, which we'll sh show you in a minute. It's a red one. We'll show you how we got there. But look what's the difference between the known chemical and the unknown. If I get a name, I can go to the book. If I don't have a name, hey, what's, go to Chris, look this one up for me. What is the LEL of the odor in Yellowstone Park? Or why don't you put the video on pause, call Chemtrek and send, let him send you the MSDS. Yeah, what's the M MSDS to the rotten egg smell? Right, you're never going to get it, but you're going to be there in four minutes. So you got to hit a couple of places. One is, I need to go home in the morning. So this call can't blow up on me, can't be radioactive, it can't burn me, and it can't have fluorine in it. Cause fluorine, could that be yellow? So I need to be able to arrive safely, have the meters that give me the confidence, that I can measure the hazard that I'm present in, and if I see the kid, I need to do, be able to know if I can make a primary search and make the rescue. Safely. Let's see if it charts. Let's see how that. this works. So remember, we're going this direction on the unknown. So let's use the periodic chart. Chris, you're a guru. Where is the element called unknown on the periodic chart? Somewhere on the chart. I don't know where, but I gotta go to the place of the chart where all the hazards exist, because I wanna size up I'll tweak down, but in the beginning, I want to size up. So look, we got an odor at the at Yellowstone Park of something. So let's see. Odor at Yellowstone Park, does it fit into that alphabetical list? No. So, so when I size it up, when I'm going to Yellowstone Park, it says that is a gas. The vapors are heavier than air. That gas is flammable. It polymerizes. It has an IP. It's an acid. It's got fluorine. It's radioactive. It's toxic. And it's parts per million. Because when you said no to that list, that's where the below the line metals are, you said this is an above the line gas with the hazard that Joe just pointed out because it prompts me to bring the instruments to the right of the arrowhead that measure those hazards. So look, me and Chris are in the rig. We're driving. You better drive since you're on the right side. I'm not He's driving. He's driving, and I'm on the I'm in the driver in the officer's seat. I got two people in the back, and it's my job to tell them what to wear. What should I wear? Uh, it's flammable, so I should wear turnout gear. So when we when we have a flammable, which this unknown we are assuming is flammable, we will wear the turnout gear and SCBA. Next thing, we'll continue on chart number three. Is the word unknown in the flammable clue No, box? it's not. Is it in the corrosive gas clue No, box? it's not. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to blow off and eliminate those hazards. It just means I'm folding them like a sandwich, and I'm going to do the proper PPE, the proper meters, and the proper hot zone, and the proper red lights. How do you do that? Look at the last answer. Red, red one. one. Think of this, and I just thought of this, Chris. Red one is, encompasses this box right. plus this box, and we're putting it all in that box which is red one. Red one is the unknown, the no match, that fits this call. So we're gonna assume it has all hazards. Heck, it may be a WMD, maybe Al Qaeda came to the park, who knows? So we're gonna bring all of our meters, we're gonna dress and turn out gear in SCBA, and we're gonna categorize the air. So look, now we arrive on the scene, and this is what we see. There's a young boy sitting over here, unconscious. There's this gas or vapor there. What is it? Now do you know what it is? You're the first arriving unit. Hazmat is an hour away. So you're what are you going to do? He's got that. You're his only chance. And what his dad's screaming in your ear, go get my son. Go get my son. 
What do you do? And more importantly, we can all go in there, uh, cowboys, and get them, but we want to make sure you're safe. So how are you safe? Well, let's see. We have red one. We bring all of these meters. And what's my mission on this one? Line of sight rescue. I will continue to make that line of sight rescue as long as my F paper changes. If my F paper changes, I'm stopping and calling for a, a, a waiting for the hazmat team in level A. But on this call, here's your meter readings. You tell me, Chris, if you're safe or not. Radiation background, right up next to that kid. That's safe? Green light. Green light. pH, no change. Fluorine, no change. Green light. He's making a line of sight rescue. Does he need to look at anything else? No. He's going in. As he's going in, Chris, you look, uh, you got 2% of the LEO. Can you do it? Even if I got 12% or 100%, the fact of the matter is I've made a commitment on a primary search on a line of sight rescue where the only hazard that could really kill me and that child is fluorine. And now, we I just I ruled it out. Because my F paper didn't turn yellow. So you're going to do this, Chris. You're going to hike over here. You're going to pull that kid out where it turned out here in SCBA. Hey, did you guys need to do decon? Gross decon done in water. So you can just hose this kid or make him jump in the water, right? He's conscious. We don't, where's the closest hose line in Yellowstone Park? There is no hose line. Jump him in the water. How are you going to clean your gear? I want to clean my gear in water. Jump in the water. So there's the kid, been rescued, taken to the hospital. Chris, the chief gets on the air. Uh, Yellowstone command to Chris Aguirre. What is it? The only thing I could give him was just like when you're transporting a patient to the hospital. I identify the patient. In this case, it is a little boy by the river where there was under the, he was at the foot of a plume of gas, and I got the following readings. Nothing on none of my meters except my LEL said 2% or 12% or 100%, we broke the red light because we had a line of sight rescue, F paper didn't turn yellow, and the risk was, burst, was worth the benefit. That's what I tell them over the air. So what we did is we didn't know the name, we didn't need to know the name, but we chose to make a rescue and turn out here in SCBA, but to assure us that we were safe, Chris looked at that F paper. Chris, let me throw a hypothetical at you. This kid, you can't see if he's alive. As you're approaching that, your F paper goes from red, uh, pink to yellow. Now what do you do? It's a red light. It's a level A entry. That right. boy's going to, unfortunately, i got to write him off. And what happens if you go in and turn out gear? What are they going to do to you? 1% exposure of FHF FH on your body is lethal. 1% right. the size of your wrist. But the good news on this one was there was no, P, there, no, there was no F change on Chris's mask. He made the rescue, saved the kid's life, lives happily ever after. Chris, go get your reward. Yeah, yeah. So that's the unknown. Now, the unknown is a little bit different. Let me review again what we do on the unknown. I can't go to the book to get chemical physical property information. I've got to use my meters to do it. Remember, then, guys, those are the same meters that the scientists use to find the parameters that go in the book. Hey, Chris, do my red lights change whether I know the chemical name up here no, or if I not. don't know the chemical it name? No, it does not. So the red lights remain the same, known or unknown. All right, so that's this week's, not this week's, this month's version of the chemical of the month. Continue to tune in and continue to practice so when the big one comes, you're ready to work. Because practice makes perfect, but perfect practice makes sure you go home safe in the morning. So till next time, I'm Chris. I'm Joe. Peace. Out.